Hello, I'm Dave Gaden, and I'm going to be presenting my PhD research from the University of Manitoba under Dr. Eric Bibeau. This is modeling anaerobic digesters using open foam, the integration of biochemistry with fluid dynamics. So first of all, what is anaerobic digestion? It's what you're doing in your stomachs every day. It's the breaking down of biomass in the absence of oxygen. It treats waste products while simultaneously producing renewable energy in the form of biogas. Its primary purposes include wastewater treatment, energy production, pollution reduction, and odor mitigation. Applications include industrial, municipal, and livestock wastewater treatment. My focus application will be on stirred tank reactor digesters, which are basically a large vat of fluid that's stirred and has an inlet and an outlet, and biogas is siphoned off the top. So in most modern engineering applications, the design process is characterized by the use of computer models. This isn't the case for anaerobic digesters, most likely because the anaerobic digestion model is not very adequate for widespread industrial use. The current state-of-the-art anaerobic digestion model is ADM-1, published in 2002 by the International Water Association. This model is a very sophisticated biochemistry model, however, it is a bulk model and it doesn't include any form of fluid flow. Therefore, it can't resolve concentration gradients or stagnation regions or anything of that sort. The purpose of my research is to produce a spatially resolved version of ADM-1, and I call it ADM-MDA. Um, ADM-MDA refers to a three-dimensional form of ADM-1, just the equations. The solver that I've produced to, to handle these equations is called crafts, and I make a distinction because crafts can be used for other uh, models rather than just ADM-MDA. Now the big challenges in ADM-MDA is that ADM-1 researchers tend to make modifications. The model is not set in stone. So this here is a Peterson matrix. It's a uh, table form view of the reaction source term. Uh, you, you have the, the reactions in rows and the species in columns. Um, now ADM1 researchers will tend to delete variables or insert variables or even insert uh, reactions. So therefore, the model must be flexible. ADM1 researchers are also used to their own tools. Uh, therefore, the model has to be user-friendly. Now, numerically, ADM-MDA is very challenging because it is a set of 20 to 40 partial differential equations, which is too stiff to solve with any conventional tools. Taking a look at the variables, the ones on the left there, uh, those are the standard variables, which are solved the way any CFD reacting flow would solve them. They're governed by continuity and momentum. However, the ones on the right, those are implicit and derived variables, and they are governed by an entirely different set of equations and must be treated entirely differently. And it's because of these variables uh, that this model is so challenging. Um, so looking at this, uh, the statement of conservation of mass for a species in ADM1 is a simple set of ordinary differential equations. Bringing this into three dimensions makes it a partial differential equation. Um, now, the ODE set for ADM1 is too stiff to solve, so they introduce implicit relations to make it practical. And when, they, when that happens, it becomes a differential algebraic equation set, something that is actually very common and can be used by many conventional tools, such as MATLAB. However, when this happens with uh, in three dimensions, it becomes a partial differential algebraic equation set, something that's very uncommon. And at the time I started my research, no tools were publicly available. So I had to create my own solver algorithm. And what it was was crafts. And I've achieved the flexibility required. Users can define the system variables, the reactions, the inhibition models, coefficients, and even variable dependencies straight up through text files with no programming skills whatsoever. They can also uh, design the custom DAE algorithms, and I, I bring those in using user-defined functions and function hooks, similar to how Fluent works. Uh, just having a look at the user-friendliness, um, as I said, you don't need programming skills for most of this. 
Uh, so you can see it's all text file inputs. On the left side, you see uh, some some reactions defined there, and on the right side, you see some uh, so coefficients. So it's all text based. Now. All CFD reacting flows have to handle three main modeling physics, flow, advection, and reaction. Now the flow, that's, uh, that's the continuity and momentum, the, the, the velocity and pressure fields, and turbulence. Advection is the transport of the species, and reaction is, of course, the reactions. Now in my solver, the advection and reaction solvers are coupled together using the block coupled solver from OpenFoam Extend project by the Wiki group. And the flow component is pseudo-coupled using a backwards-looking time-step doubling error control. And experience with my model showed me that the flow model actually required more time steps than the, than the reaction model, so I created a sub-stepping. Sub now, of course, we need to bring in the, the algebraic relations. So uh, these are the UDFs, such as the ion model and the gas model. And I coupled them together among themselves using what I call point stabilization coupling, which just basically makes sure you re repeat the variables, you repeat the, uh, the calculations until all the variables stabilize. Then I, uh, I coupled that with the block coupled solver using source term stabilization coupling, which is where you put you actually put a source term into the governing equations of each one, and you can tune that source term until both of them agree. So that's how they sort of couple each other, and it was a very effective tool. Uh, some of the main components of this, this project, it was quite, a, quite an undertaking in terms of programming uh, quantity. Um, some of these are, are publicly available right now, such as Equation Reader, Multisolver, or PLC Emulator. Others, uh, uh, everything is available on request. One of the main challenging aspects of this, of, of ADM MDA, was the, gra the gas model. Because here I had to bring in a bulk fluid model from ADM1, known as Henry's Law, and apply it to the differential law for, for mass diffusion. And when I did this, the resulting ordinary differential equation was impractically stiff. This required hundreds of thousands of iterations per time step, which was totally unacceptable. Um, after playing with this for a little while, I discovered that the, the culprit was um, the gas flow rate. This is the, uh, the flow rate through the gas outlet line. And a, a unique thing about this uh, quantity is that it is set to zero when the pressure difference is negative. So that acts as if there's a check valve on the gas line. Um, this introduces a step function or a discontinuity in, in, the, in the function. So anytime a numerical model has a discontinuity, it tends to behave poorly. So for that reason, I introduced a logistic function, which allowed the transition to go smoothly. I also added an offset, which I called P sub C. And the offset could be interpreted as the fact that any check valve requires a certain amount of pressure to actually open. The, they call it the crack pressure. Once I've introduced these, the uh, resulting ODE was very much more ugly, but it was also much better behaved, and I was able to continue my research. This, you can take as sort of an insight after, after being in the CFD industry for a little while, um, this is what CFD development is all about, these little things. You find, uh, you find these uh, areas where the models are behaving badly, and you often actually bring them closer to the, the real-world physics that you're trying to, trying to model. So, as I mentioned earlier, uh, ADM1 suffers from a, a numerical stiffness issue. Numerical stiffness means that there's vast differences in time scale, and it makes it hard to solve. In ADM1's case, we have, um, we have the ion model, which takes fractions of a second. And we have hydrolysis reactions, which take hours or even days. And because we have such a wide spread of time scale, you need a very, very small time step and a very, very tight tolerance to solve it. So Kraft's uh, ADM MDA behaves the same way. So here's sort of a qualitative interpretation of this. Um, as the stiffness goes up, the convergence criteria has to come down. And if you don't meet the convergence criteria properly, then your model is divergent. So you have to stay below that. 
but if you go too far down, then you get into the area where it exceeds the precision level of the computer, uh, double precision. As the convergence criteria comes down, the required time step plummets much faster. So you see it coming down here. Uh, and the result is um, the model can transition between practical, impractical, and impossible, de depending on how you, on the geometry and, and the concentration gradients and things like that. So uh, ADM MDA tended to hover close to the impractical, but still slightly practical. So I was able to continue working with it, and I was able to do some verification and validation. And I just wanted to make a point of this. Verification and validation often misuse terms. Verification means you're only confirming that the algorithm works as it's designed. Validation, on the other hand, means you're comparing it against reality. So experimental data or really good DNS data. Um, I went through a series of, of simple verifications. Every single component was verified in, on all kinds of different aspects. Uh, then I did more complicated verifications as I just kept going and going. And finally, I was able to do a full-fledged case study. Uh, here I was able to compare ADM MDA's performance against ADM1. And uh, this is a simple cavity with an inlet and an outlet and a mixing source term. The heater actually uh, was disabled for stiffness reasons. So uh, we have fluid injection happening two minutes daily, giving a hydraulic retention time of eight Point three days and it mixes 10 minutes every hour so here's the results most of the variables sort of behaved like this where you can see they're tracking very closely to each other the solid line being my model and the dotted line being ADM1 um, now you'll notice this is a sawtooth profile XC I should explain what that is XC that's the raw undigested fluid coming into the digester so the, the, the vertical spikes, um, that's, that's a fluid injection event. And it's all coming in. And then throughout the day, it digests and it slowly drops in quantity until the next day, another fluid injection event. And you'll notice that there's a gradual disagreement between ADM1 and ADM MDA. Um, my model is predicting a greater amount of XC being present in the digester. In this case, uh, ADM1 is wrong. Uh, it's because of the, the fact that it's a bulk model, it must make the assumption that it is a sudden uniform mixture. So anything coming in the inlet is instantly mixed uniformly throughout, therefore it's available right close to the outlet to, be, to, to leave. So, so there's less that stays in, there's more of a short circuiting. And it's this subtle difference uh, in mass exchange that, if, that impacts the other variables to such an extent that it shows spatial variation is very important. So uh, you'll see other variables such as acetate. This is an interim product. You'll notice acetate on my model is running away with itself. Whereas ADM1 is predicting a healthy digester, uh, everything is going fine. Whereas my model is predicting the digester is not doing well at all. And the reason for this is if you look at the acetate degraders, these are the microbes that actually eat the acetate. You can see the subtle mass differences, if you look at the scale on the side, it's a subtle difference, um, is they're washing out. So there's not as much acetate to stick, acetate degraders. And as a result, um, here's, another, here's another consequence of spatial resolution. My model predicts a higher level of CH4, methane, dissolved in the liquid, uh, whereas the, uh, the ADM1 predicts a lower level. However, when the gas comes out of the outlet line, my model predicts lower levels coming out. And that's because spatial resolution allows us to see that the gas concentration is mostly in the center because of the mixing action. So it's not available at the free surface to mass exchange. Uh, and as a consequence, it changes the, uh, the composition of the output gas. So carbon dioxide is higher uh, and hydrogen is lower. And here we can see the check valve uh, oscillating back and forth in the gas flow rate. So uh, let's do a video of a video. So this is a meta video. Let's see if this works. So here's our, our digester. Uh, we have the inlet on the top left, outlet bottom right, and the red stuff is going to be the XC coming in, undigested stuff. So you can see it coming in and swirling around.
and in a minute you'll see another fluid mixing event. And as it, as it gets digested, it slowly turns from pink to blue. There it goes mixing again. Now this video is actually pretty long and it gets very boring very quickly as it slowly turns to just one color. But that's the interesting stuff during the fluid injection events. So, in conclusion, no practical anaerobic digestion models exist. The state-of-the-art model is ADM1, a bulk model. This research advances anaerobic digestion modeling by creating ADM-MDA, which adds an integrated CFD model to ADM1 and incorporates spatial resolution into ADM1. Uh, it creates CRAFTS, a general solver that can handle PDAEs and are applicable to other models. Uh, CRAFTS has been verified for proper function, however it hasn't been validated against experiment. Uh, numerical stiffness inherent in ADM1 comes into conflict with the CFD software, which limits its practicality. Um, I compare ADM1 against ADM-MDA for identical conditions, and I find that ADM1 predicts a healthy digester, whereas ADM-MDA predicts an unhealthy digester, which underscores the importance of continuing research. Uh, this research provides suggestions to improve model performance, and research continues. I'd like to acknowledge the generous funding of Manitoba Hydro and the NSERC, and I'd like to acknowledge the contributions of Dr. Bebo. And we'll move on to questions. If, uh, if I'm still available, if this is something you see on the internet, you can feel free to contact me uh, at these details. Thanks for watching.